all right, y'all, I'm not wasting any time here. Right now, we're going to demystify what is the most common first lesson I ever had with students. Everything you need to know to understand learning drum sheet music. And it starts with this. All right, guys, the first thing you have to understand is what sheet music looks like. We write it on this thing here. It's called a staff paper. It's got five lines, right? Just as simple as this. And the way that we arrange sheet music for drums is as follows. We got our hi-hat, crash, rag tom, snare, floor tom, and kick drum. So it goes in order of the heights of the drum set. Like your crash is the highest, hi-hat is going to be the second highest, rag tom, you know, snare, floor tom, kick drum. And then sometimes we'll have other toms, right, like a second rag tom right there or like a second floor tom right there, in between, right? So again, the snare's right in the middle, bass drum's always on the bottom, hi-hat is usually an X right above the top, or sometimes it'll be on the line, but sometimes that'll be the ride. So depending on what sheet music you use, you might see a key that says ride, right? Or hi-hat, or crash. Okay, so next we need to understand the subdivisions. To understand the subdivisions, we first gotta look at the quarter note. So this is what a quarter note looks like. It's a filled in circle with a line that just goes straight up and down. All right, so right here we have one measure of quarter notes. So when we think of music, we typically think of counting like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? So we count like that naturally. What we're doing there is we're counting quarter notes. And what these quarter notes mean is one-fourth, right? Each note takes up one-fourth of the measure. So right here, one, two, three, four. Those are quarter notes. So when we put on a metronome, which is extremely important for practice, it's going to be clicking in quarter notes, naturally. All right, so next we have the quarter note rest. We see here quarter note on one and three. And then in the middle, we see that Harry Potter lightning bolt looking thing. That's what a quarter note rest looks like. It'll just be this weird looking squiggle and people often write it slightly different ways, but this is how I write it. All right, so next we're gonna get into real subdivisions. These are eighth notes and eighth note rests. So just like with quarter note, we're dealing with eighth notes, one eighth. There are eight of these eighth notes per measure. Eighth notes are twice as fast as the quarter note. So for every quarter note, there are two eighth notes. And we count them like one and two and three and four and. What the eighth note looks like is a dot with a line straight up, just like the quarter note, but then it has this tail coming down here. And then when we have two of them together, we simply connect that tail to the next note over. The eighth note rest is going to kind of look like just the eighth note upside down, but the dot's more in the middle. All right, next we got the triplet. This is specifically the eighth note triplet. What happens here is we use that same one line to connect that we do with the eighth notes, but we have to fit three triplets in the space of two eighth notes, which is the same as fitting three notes in the space of one quarter note. Now triplets will always be marked by this three written above them every single time, no matter what. They'll always have that three written above them, and they will be counted like one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh. It's important to note that these and and uh are not the same as they are with eighth notes or sixteenth notes, which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay, so the triplet rest looks exactly like the eighth note rest. We just simply take out whichever triplet we're not playing and we put an eighth note rest there. And then we draw a little line over it to still indicate that they're triplets and we write that three that's always going to be present in triplets. Then here we simply have a full measure of 16th notes with how to count the whole thing. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Simple as that. So here we have a full measure of all the different variations that you'll typically see of 16th notes. The first one is an individual 16th note. The second note on the E is a 16th note rest. Looks just like the 8th note rest, but with an extra tail, extra dot. Then we have two 16th notes together for the and a. Those two lines connect, right? Then a 16th note rest. Then an individual 16th note on the E. And a with two. 
And then we have what trips people up. This two sixteenth notes and then an eighth note. So it's three E and, and that eighth note is the and. Then we have the opposite, an eighth note and then two sixteenth notes. Four and a. Uh, right? You see that the lines, we have to focus on where the lines are. How many lines does each note have? How many lines comes before it and how many lines comes after it? So the last thing we have to talk about is the dotted note. So right here we have a dotted quarter note followed by an eighth note. So what a dot means in music is that we simply play the value of the note before it plus half of the value of that note. So in this case with the dotted quarter note, we're going to play one quarter note plus one eighth note. So right here I wrote that it's counted like one and one quarter note plus one eighth note. Lastly here to illustrate that point, the dotted eighth note. And we see this very often. So this is an eighth note with a dot coming right after it, followed by a sixteenth note, right? Half of an eighth note is a sixteenth note. So the value of an eighth note plus half the value of an eighth note, which is a sixteenth note. So we count this like one, uh, one, and uh. So now I'll quickly run a demonstration for you of each of these subdivisions. Quarter notes, eighth notes, eighth note triplets, and sixteenth notes. And my metronome here on my phone set to 80 BPM. This metronome app is called Pro Metronome. It's great. I highly recommend it. But I think it's only for iOS. So this is 80 BPM, right? Quarter notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and two and triplets. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a sixteenths. One e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one. There you have it. All right. So with that, I believe you have everything you could need to know to really get started learning drum sheet music, whether that's out of a drum sheet music book or whether that's from learning your favorite song off Google. If you have any further questions or you'd like to take a lesson with me, I do offer private lessons. Please leave me a comment here on this video or simply reach out to me on Instagram. I'll leave my Instagram in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all soon.